Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Deck. So as you know, Tuesday means it's Type 2 or Standard Tuesday, and we actually have a super unique list to check out today. This is White Black Exile from Yusei Akahiro, who took it to a top 8 finish in the infamous small Japanese tournament, but congrats to Yusei on their finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break down White Black Exile for Standard, if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made to videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So White Black Exile is super crazy, mostly because it feels like the deck is built around Lost Legacy. So obviously Lost Legacy is pretty good at breaking up combos, so I'm assuming that you see realized, well, there's like 35-40% of the people around me playing Marvel decks, so maybe I will just run main deck Lost Legacy, get rid of all the Ulamogs, it can only hit non-artifacts, non-land, so you can't hit Marvel itself, but you can get rid of the Ulamogs, get rid of that big threat. So the weird thing about this is Lost Legacy, while it's super good in some specific situations, like when you gotta get rid of all the Ulamogs, a lot of times it's really bad, which is normally why you don't see Lost Legacy in the main deck. So the thing with White Black Exile is it kind of has a super weird, super janky solution to this problem. So what do we do with four main deck Lost Legacies if we don't have a good target in our opponent's deck? Well, we play a target in our deck. So we have four copies of Eternal Scourge, so we can take and exile these, and then we get to cast them from exile. That's the unique ability of Eternal Scourge, is you can play it from exile. When it becomes target with a spell, it goes to exile. So we can exile all the copies from our deck, which basically draws us four cards for three mana. It puts them in our exile zone, and then we can just cast them. Still, I mean, we're reliant on winning with three threes. That's our primary win condition, but they're essentially unkillable three threes, that are just going to keep coming back and coming back because if our opponent targets them, they go to exile, we can cast them again, we get them with our Lost Legacy. So this is our plan is just to grind our opponent out and it gives our Lost Legacy some utility in matchups where probably it's not very good against our opponent's deck. So that's where we're building around Eternal Scourge. We can also play Descend Upon the Sinful as our primary wrath. So this not only exiles all creatures, which means, yes, we're exiling our Scourges, but we get to get them back anyway, but we can also get a 4-4. We have a ton of spells in this deck. We have some Planeswalkers, some other creatures. So there's a pretty reasonable shot that we're going to be able to turn on Delirium and then we can get a 4-4 Angel along with all our Scourges in the Exile Zone. The rest of the threats in our deck are a little scattered. We have one Sky Sovereign Council Flagship. Works really well with Eternal Scourge. You know how Scrap Heap Scrounger is very good with vehicles because it keeps coming back. You get to keep crewing it. Eternal Scourge kind of does the same thing but it comes back from exile, so we always have this 3-3 three, three to crew up our Sky Sovereign, use it to win the game. Walking Ballista gets rid of early game creatures, also super helpful in turning on the Delirium for Descend Upon the Sinful. And then last, a couple of Planeswalkers, Liliana gets some cards in the graveyard for Delirium for Descend Upon the Sinful, also can just take over the game by making zombies, maybe reanimating something. On Nyx List, does it all, kills something, draws us cards, very good in slower matchups. The rest of the deck is a ton of removal. So we have four Fatal Pushes, four Grasp of Darkness, two Emulating Glares. So a ton of ways to kill creatures from zombies, kill creatures from Mardu vehicles. Cast Out's kind of a catch-all, gets rid of Etherworks Marvels, gets rid of Planeswalkers like Gideon, Anguish and Making, same thing, but a little bit of life loss thrown in. In the mana base, we have Shambling Vents as an additional threat to help us close out our game. One thing about this deck is it is a bit threat light, so Shambling Vents is actually really important. A bunch more dual lands, Gyre reach sanitarium for some looting blighted fen kind of some removal in land form and some basics as far as the sideboard we get a bunch of different discard one each of labor of the heart transgress the mind whispers of emerical then we have a bunch of different removal deadweight for early games ruinous path for planeswalkers to the slaughter king of planeswalkers or creatures and then forsake the worldly to get rid of artifacts flying tendrils and fumigate give us some more wrath scumble to temptation or succumb to temptation gives us a way to draw some cards and soren 
super good in controlling matchups. These are kind of the cards we bring in against Blue Red Control or a deck like that to help us go long and win a long attrition matchup. And that is White Black Exile for Standard. And that's our instant deck tech for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.